Hey guys, what's up, what's up? Welcome to my coverage of round, I think round 8 of Hastings 1895. In this game, Harry Nelson Pillsbury is playing Emmanuel Stepanovich Schiffers. They all got these middle names saved in chess base. Uh, anyway, it's black to move in this position. Sorry, I'm lying. It's white to move in this position. And basically in this game, uh, Schiffers played the Evans Gambit but didn't do a very good job of playing it. He basically gave up a pawn and, the, and it has negative compensation for it. Like black's position is better and he's up a pawn. Uh, at this point, white played the move bishop to b5, attacking the opponent's queen. So my question to you, what should black play here? Pause your video, try to figure it out. And yeah, this was this was a relatively easy game for Pillsbury. Bishop b5 fails to a relatively simple tactic. We can't go knight f2, because after rook f2, queen takes bishop knight e7, white is actually one apiece. Um, we can't go c6. Well, we, maybe we can, but knight takes d6 is like... We, we've weakened the d6 point is the point. <laughs> so, bishop to f1. Attack this knight. When the knight moves, now we take on d6. The key, however, we can just go queen takes b5. This rook is overloaded on the f2 point and the b5 square. And after rook takes, knight takes f2. Uh, I believe this is how the game... Oh no, he did something crazy, but this this is just basically winning for, for black. Uh, let's say rook takes, knight takes, pawn takes. Black is up two pawns in a rook end game and is going to win easily. So after queen takes b5, that was pretty much the end. Somehow, oh, white went f4, which is interesting. Definitely interesting. The idea is, if, if we do anything, white will go queen h5, like, like if we go queen takes rook, queen h5, knight takes e7. So maybe this was his plan. However, black just goes knight takes f2, rook takes, and now our queen is not being attacked anymore. And we can just play knight takes f5, queen h5, check. He just moved the king. And then when e takes f4, f6, queen takes f4, and rook on b to e8. Good attacking tries from, from white, honestly. It made the game somewhat interesting. But after rook g1, queen, G5, queen d5, it just wasn't enough to save the day. Rook f7 was played just for, for safety reasons. Uh, I think if rook e2, this move would have been a little hasty. The idea is the rook's pinned. However, what can white do? He can distract the queen. And now, actually, he may be in some trouble. So rook e2 would have been a, a serious mistake. Instead, he just played rook f7. And after queen g4, I'm not sure why he did that, rook e4, queen h5, Rook to f4. Queen e2. Rook takes f5. c4. Queen f3. Rook f8. Notice the rook on g2 is pinned, so it cannot take on on eight, g7. And the game ended soon after this. Queen d6. And what would be a good finishing blow here? Yeah, rook to e8. Now we're threatening, actually just queen takes g2. If you make a random move, this leads to checkmate. So white went rook, <laughs> had to go h3. The idea is after rook e2, queen h4, but all of white's pieces are like in a pretzel right now. And after, after this move, rook e1, black won the game. So actually even after queen b5, it wasn't like super simple. There's still a few little technical matters to be dealt with, but the key was seeing this move, queen takes b5. Although f4 was definitely a good try for white. I totally forgot about it, actually, when I was presenting this puzzle. So thanks, guys, for watching. Pillsbury is now, like, plus five or something after eight rounds, and I will see you guys tomorrow with another game of his. Bye-bye.